give you a little um, lead in or um, I said from the start of my career, I waxed personal and political and have sought to be an activist, subversive, radical, immigrant, feminist, transnational, Buddhist, neoclassical, nerd poet who was always on her soapbox with a bag of tricks. Is that, it, well, there, there are a lot of promises there, right? Um, so, um, and I want to, I want to um, thank you, thank you, Wisconsin. I mean, I guess I, I love your sharp cheese and they're happy cows. They're not, uh, not as happy as, Chi uh, I guess, uh, Chinese American cows here in California, but um, <laughs> but in any case, um, I wanna begin with a self-introduction of sorts. I always begin with this poem because it grounds the reading in autobiography. And I guess it's also one of my signature poems. It's, it's a 30-year-old poem, and every time I give a reading, um, I must read it. It's just, you know, uh, I'm superstitious that way. It's called How I Got That Name, an Essay on Assimilation. I am Marilyn Mailing Chin. Oh, how I love the resoluteness of that first person singular, followed by that stalwart indicative, a B, without that uncertain ing of becoming. Of course, the name had been changed somewhere between Angel Island and the sea when my father, the paper son, late 1950s, obsessed with the bombshell blonde, transliterated Mei Ling to Marilyn. Nobody dared question his initial impulse. We all know lust drove men to greatness, not goodness, not decency. And there I was, a wayward pink baby, named after some tragic white woman, swollen with gin and nambutal. My mother couldn't pronounce the R. She dubbed me number one female offshoot for brevity. Henceforth, she will live and die in sublime ignorance, flanked by loving children, the kitchen deity, where my father dithers, a tomcat in Hong Kong trash, a gambler, a petty thug, who bought a chain of chop suey joints in Piss River, Oregon, with bootleg, bootleg Gucci cash. Nobody dared question his integrity, given his nice devout daughters and his bright industrious sons, as if filial piety were the standard by which all earthly men were measured. Oh, how trustworthy our daughters, how thrifty our sons, how we managed to fool the experts in education, statistics, and demography. We're not very creative, but not adverse to rote learning, rote learning, rote learning. Indeed, they can use us, but the model minority is a tease. We know you are watching now and we refuse to give you any. Oh, bamboo shoots, bamboo shoots, the further west we go, we'll hit east. The deeper down we dig, we'll find China. History has turned its stomach on a black polluted beach where life doesn't hinge on that red, red wheelbarrow. But whether or not our new lover in that final episode of Santa Barbara will lean over a Santa candle and call us a bitch. Oh Lord, where have we gone wrong? We have no inner resources. Then one redolent spring morning, the great patriarch Chin peered down from his kiosk in heaven and saw that his descendants were ugly. One had a squarish head and a nose without a bridge, another's profile long and knobbed as a gourd. The third, the sad, brutish one, may never, never marry. And I, his least favorite, not quite boiled, not quite cooked, a plump pomfret simmering in my juices. Too listless to fight for my people's destiny. To kill without resistance is not slaughter, says a proverb. So I wait for imminent death. The fact that this death is also metaphorical is testament to my lethargy. So here lies Marilyn Mei Ling Chin, married once, twice to so-and-so, a Li and a Wong, daughter of the virtuous Yue Quin Wong and Ji Ji Chin, the infamous. 
sister of a dozen, cousin of a million, survived by everybody and forgotten by all. She was neither black nor white, neither cherished nor vanquished, just another squatter in own bamboo grove minding her poetry. When one day heaven was unmerciful and a chasm opened where she stood like the jaws of a mighty white whale or the maw of a metaphysical Godzilla, it swallowed her whole. She did not flinch nor writhe nor fret about the afterlife, but stayed solid as wood, happily, though nod, tattered, mesmerized by all that was lavished upon her and all that was taken away. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, that's kind of a sig signature poem. I wrote 30 years ago, 30 years ago, I published it in the Iowa Review. And, and it's, you know, it's still one of those poems in which I have to read it at, at you know, at a reading. Otherwise, people will say, why didn't you read that poem? It's like, like you, the Rolling Stones have to have to read, sas, you know, sing satisfaction at every, you know, uh, at, you know, every venue, you know, that kind of thing. Um, um, there are many ways to write a an immigrant anthem. So, and now um, I'd like to read um, a blues poem, and it's called "Blues on Yellow," and I and I was inspired by. Bessie, the great Bessie Smith. And um, for those of you who, who love the blues, uh, I was also very hard, you know, I, I was obsessed with, uh, with Angela Davis's Blues Legacy and Black Feminism. That is a fabulous book and it's still in print. So order it um, from, uh, from uh, Woodland Pat, uh, Pat, yeah, Pattern. Um, so um, Blues on Yellow. The canary died in the gold mine. Her dreams got lost in the sieve. The canary died in the gold mine. Her dreams got lost in the sieve. Her husband, the crow, killed under the railroad. The spokes has shorn his wings. Something's cooking in Chin's kitchen. 10,000 yellow-bellied sapsuckers baked in a pie. Something's cooking in Chin's kitchen. 10,000 yellow-bellied sapsuckers baked in a pie. Something's cooking in Chin's kitchen. Die, die, yellow bird, die, die. Oh, crack an egg on the griddle, yellow will ooze into white. Oh, crack an egg on the griddle. Yellow will ooze into white. Run, run, sweet little Puritan. Yellow will ooze into white. If you cut my yellow wrists, I'll teach my yellow toes to write. If you cut my yellow wrists, I'll teach my yellow toes to write. If you cut my yellow fists, I'll teach my yellow feet to fight. Do not be afraid to perish, my mother. Buddha's compassion is nigh. Do not be afraid to perish, my mother. Our boat will sail tonight. Your babies will reach the promised land. The stars will be their guide. I am so mellow yellow, mellow yellow, Buddha sings in my veins. I am so mellow yellow, mellow yellow, Buddha sings in my veins. Oh, take me to the land of the unreborn. There's no life on earth without pain. So that's, that's the blues poem. Yeah. Um, yeah, check out, check out Bessie Smith. She's, she has some wonderful things on the, 
you know, on the web to check out some of her old podcasts. Um, let's, let's read some bad girl haiku. Are you guys in the mood for some bad girl haiku? Okay, I saw. Okay, Bethany over there is just into it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now the haiku is actually it is an American pop form. You know, not, it's no longer a Japanese form. We can't go back to the 18th century and write, yeah, um, with Basho and uh, Issa and and the the great classical Japanese artists, uh, haiku artists. Now it's a, I I say it's a pop American form is that everybody writes haiku. You write haiku to your mom, to your dad, to your beloved, um, to your cats, yes. <laughs> but but I but it's interesting. I learned from the African American poets, you know, the uh, uh, poets like uh, Etheridge Knight and Sonia Sanchez, they reinvigorate the haiku. They um they brought in social protests. Um, uh, um, Etheridge Knight wrote those, those prison haiku, do you know, you know about those? And Sonia Sanchez wrote blues haiku and, and wrote a, a haiku sequence for Emmett Till. So, so the haiku is very, has become a, a, you know, a, an American form. It's become a, um, a, a pop American form. So, but these are um, what I call bad girl, libidinous, anti-Zen haiku. <laughs> and um, and yeah, okay, I'll you know I'll challenge anybody out there to you know people out there to write some bad you know some bad girl libidinous and uh, sexy erotic haiku, uh, especially when we're all locked down, right? <laughs> Twenty-five haiku. A hundred red fire ants scouring, scouring the white peony. Fallen plum blossoms return to the branch. You sleep, then harden again. Cuttlefish in my palm stiffens with rigor mortis. Boy toys can't love. I can't hear you guys laughing. Snicker, so <laughs> I'll just go on. <laughs> Neighbors, barn, grass mat, crickets, blue boy, trowel handle, dress soaked in mud. Iron headed mace, double studded halberd, slice into emptiness. Oh, fierce ogoos, tie me to two wild elephants, tear me in half. Oh, my swarthy herder, two humped batrian, drive me the long distance. Forceps, tongs, bushy, whip, flanks, scabbard, stirrup, goads, distaff, wither, owl. Black-eyed Susan's Queen Anne's lace, bounty of cyclamen, moan paths erupt. Gaze at the charred hills, the woe begone chaos, we are all God's hussies. I have not fondled the emperor's lapdog, whose name is Black Muzzle. Urge your horses into the mist-swilled Galilee, O oh, sweet bedlamite. Her majesty's rounding up the stairs to find the pleasure dome. Ancient pond, the frog jumps in and in and in, the deep slap of water. The frog jumps into the ancient pond. She says, no, I am not ready. Coyote cooked his dead wife's vagina and fed it to his new wife. I plucked out three white pubic hairs and they turned into flying monkeys. 
Let's do it on the antimacassar, on the antimacassar. Little Red drew her teeny pistol from her basket and said, eat me. Chimera, Madame Popot grafting a date tree onto a date tree. His unworthy appendage, his mutinous henchman grazed my pink cheeks. He on top now changes to bottom. God is welcomes her devotee. Fish, fish, foul, foul, mock me, mistress being curt. I am both duck and essence. Sing, sing, little yellow blight. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Don't touch him, bitch. We're engaged. And besides, he's wearing my nipple ring. <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's for the bad girls out there. Um, um, the last line, the last haiku is a found haiku. I heard one of my students saying something to that effect into her cell phone. So that's a found haiku. Those bad girl students. Um, okay, let's say what, sh what shall I read? Okay, uh, identity poem 99. I um I went to the Iowa workshop. I think I graduated in the 80s or something a long time ago. <laughs> I have good hair dye, you know. I'm just <laughs> I graduated from my work workshop a long time ago. Well, um I met this young student, um Chinese student, and said that that she felt that she was the only Chinese person in the entire state. And it was very very sad that she said this. So um, this is a poem for, for, for all these, these students and these, these, um, uh, these uh, little Asian American women who feel like uh, they've been displaced or they're, um, and is called Identity Poem Number 99. Are you the sky or the allegory for loneliness? Are you the only Chinese restaurant in Beloit, Wisconsin? A half-breed war orphan adopted by proper Christians. A heathen poi dog, a creamy half and half. Are you a dingy vinyl address book? A wrist without a corsage? Are you baby's breath face down on a teenage road in America? Are you earphones detached, left dangling on an airplane jack to diaspora? Are you doomed to a childhood without music, wearing your Granny's one string woe be gone instrument, mewling about the past. Are you hate speech or are you a lullaby? Anecdotes requiring footnotes, an ethnic joke rehashed. How many Chinamen does it take to screw? How many Chinamen did it take to screw? A light bulb. Are you so poor that you cannot? call your mother. You have less than $2 on your phone card and it's a long cable to Nirvana. Are you a skylight through which the bus girl sees heaven? A chopping block stained by the blood of 10,000 innocents, which daily the same bus girl must wipe off. Does existence preempt essence? I being what my ancestors were not. Suddenly, 
you're a vegan vegetarian. Restaurant is a facticity and getting the hell out is transcendence. Was the punchline incandescent? Was a nosebleed your last tender memory of her? Did he say no dogs and China women? Are you a rose or a tattoo of fire? <laughs> okay, now what? I guess uh, I'm going to read Beautiful Boyfriend. Michael talked a little bit about it. And uh, and I, my, my boyfriend, Don Lone Wolf, he was of, of the um, uh, Ute Mountain tribe and he died in 2011. He had, um, he, he had a massive uh, stroke, uh, brain hemorrhage while we were driving down the freeway from, you know, 405 freeway, if you know, Los, from, from Los Angeles to San Diego. And, and he died, you know, while driving, it was, it was freaky. He turned the car to the side and I, I took over, I took over the, uh, the driving and, and I drove him into um, the hospital, the emergency room and, and he perished. Um, it was, it was very, uh, it was frightening. Um, and then, and then I, I read up on, on, um, on elegies. And if you want to look up Tennyson's In Memorial, it's uh, uh, written for, uh, for his beloved A.H.H., -H -H, whoever that is, uh, is a he. And, and he also died of a brain hemorrhage. And if one look, yeah, it's a beautiful, uh, it took him, 20 years, 17 years to write uh, this long, uh, this book length um, 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 elegy and it's written in, in what he calls memorial quatrains. Now I've been playing with the, with the Chinese American quatrain. I try to meld the Western, the Eastern quatrain, the Tang Dynasty quatrain with Western quatrains. Um, so, um, and, and, you know, um, it, it, in my work, I've, I've worked with the, the Chinese American, what I call it, the Chinese American quatrain often, and uh, I'm still working on them. And I, um, it's, it, it, you know, it's really the, yeah, the a bicultural form that I've been um, brewing, all, you know, for many years. Beautiful boyfriend for Don Lone Wolf. His dates are 1958 to 2011. My skiff is made of spice wood. My oars are cassia bracked. Music flows from bow to starboard. Early Mozart, cool side of cold train, and miles and miles of miles. That's a jazz reference. Okay, that's a pun. Okay, I'm trying to be punny here. Cheap California Merlot and my new boyfriend. My beautiful boyfriend, please shave your head at the Miramar barber shop. Take the tonsure, bow toward the earth, prostrate and praise, breathe in the goddess's potent citron. Bullet, don't shoot him, he's my draft horse. Night scope, don't pierce him, he's my love stock. Sniper, who are you? High on the roof. Stop for a slow cigarette. Let him escape. If I could master the nine doors of my body and close my heart to the cries of suffering, perhaps I could love you like no other. Float my mind toward the other side of hate. The shanty towns of Tijuana sing for you. The slums of Little Sudan hold evening prayer. One dead brown boy is a tragedy. 10,000 is a statistic. So let's fuck 
my love until the dogs pass. All beautiful boyfriends are transitory. They have no souls, the shiny brown flesh. Tomorrow, they'll turn into purple festering corpses, fissured, gored by myriad flies. My boyfriend drives up in his late Humvee, says we're going to hunt Bin Laden. We'll sleep in caves and roast wild hare and rise to praise the bright red sun. I was once a beloved spotted ox. Now I've become a war horse of hate. I pulled the lorries of 10,000 corpses before I myself was finally flayed. Down the Irati River, you lay yourself to sleep. No sun, no moon, no coming, no going, no causality, no personality, no hunger, no thirst. Skyward toward Angkor Wat, beyond Loch Jacklon Lhasa, you were floating on a giant stupa, waiting for our Lord. Malor malaria deltas, typhoidal keys, tsunamis don't judge, calamity grieves no one. The poor will be submerged, the rich won't be saved. Purge the innocent, sink the depraved. You push down my hand with your bony hand. The fox hair brush lifts and bends. You sigh, there's no revision in this life. One bad stroke and all is gone. What do I smell but the perfume of transience? Crushed calyxes, rotting phloem. Let's write pretty poems, pretty poems, pretty poems. Mass stale programs with a sweet whiff of oblivion. Oh, that's, that's really hard for me to read that poem because I just, I think of him and I think of all those suffering right now um, with, the, with the virus in, the ho in hospitals all over the world. Um, we, are there requests? I'll be like, <laughs> anybody has a, <laughs> <laughs> Michael, is there a poem you want to hear? <laughs> um, okay, let's let's look at. Is anybody, huh? If if there is anybody with a specific request, do you, is there anybody potentially out there? Hello. Oh yeah. Okay, Bethany. Hi. Hi. Um, I. Would love to hear horse, horse, hyphen, hyphen. Oh, okay. And how'd you, how'd you discover that poem? I was browsing through your um, poems online and I liked it a lot on Poetry Foundation. Oh, so poetry oh Foundation. good, okay. <laughs> Ninety, okay, okay. Now I I live on the border. I live in uh, San Diego, and I so I, right on the border. Yeah, uh, and I can I can see Tijuana <laughs> from my window. No, that's not true. <laughs> but but in any case, um, so these are border border hustles. I'm I'm I'm. It's a um and it's a free hustle form. So I. I've been playing with different forms. So I was, uh, I love playing with different forms and making variations and so forth. So these, um, these are huzzles, uh, my idea of, of huzzles. Horse, horse, hyphen, hyphen. I hate, I love, I don't know how. I'm biracial, I'm torn in two. 
Tonight he will lock me in fear in the metal detector of love. Rape flowers, rape seed, rape pierres, a soldier's wry offerings. He will press his tongue into my neighing throat. I can speak three dialects badly. I want you now behind the blue door. In a slow hovercraft of dreams, I saw Nanking from a bilge. Some ashes fell on his lap. I'm afraid it's my mother. The protocol is to is never to mention her while we are fucking. The bad conceit, the bad conceit, police will arrest you. Twin compasses, twin compasses cannot come. Your father is not a car, not a compass, and not God, though he vanished in his sky blue convertible galaxy with a blonde. He kept crawling back to us, back to us, each time with a fresh foot mangled. One emperor was named Lickety, the other name Split. Suddenly the soup of chaos makes sense. Refugees roaming from tent to tent looking for love. The banknote is a half note, an octave above God. Oh, the great conjugator of curses. Shit, shat, have, shut. I have loved you both, both bowl cut and shagged. There are days when the sun is a great gash, nights the moon smokes hashish and falls asleep on your lap. Sorry, but your morphing was not satisfactory. Shapeshifter, you choked on your magic scarf. I heard this joke at the bar. An agnostic dyslexic insomniac stayed up all night searching for dog. The prosperity sign flips right side up again. The almanac says this ox year will toil like good immigrants. Horse is frigid, mule cat love, salmon dead at the red. One leg is stationary, the other must tread, must tread, must tread. The trials, the triads riddled him than us. What is the heart's past participle? She would have loved not to have loved. I bought you at the corner of Aga Agave and Revolution. You wrap yourself thrice around my green arm and shut. A childless woman can feel the end of all existence. Look on that bloody spot chrysanthemum, shamanka, fetch your grandmother at the, bus, at the bus stop, changeling, you are the one I love. There's, there's this is, uh, yeah, uh, there's, this is great homage, strange homage to John Donne and the, uh, the, com the, the compass cannot come home, you know, um, so. Uh, that's for the nerds, for the nerdy poets. Thank you for, for liking that poem. Thank you for finding that poem. Um, how about Black President? I, I have to read a sonnet because uh, uh, <laughs> I've been reading these love poems. So I might sort yeah, I read a, well, I, this is a love sonnet to, uh, um, to our black, uh, to the great Obama, right? <laughs> we certainly miss him, right? <laughs> and it's Good Friday, you know, we're, we're uh, heading toward Easter. So, um, so there is a, a reference, uh, a, a Christian reference in the end, um, black president. If a black man could be president, could a white man be his slave? Could a sinner enter heaven 
by uttering his name. If the Terminator is my governor, could a cowboy be my king? When shall the cavalry enter Deadwood and save my prince? An exo cannibal eats her enemies. An endo cannibal eats her friends. I'd rather starve myself silly than to make amends. Blood on the altar, blood on the lamb, blood in the chalice, not symbolic, but fresh. So I, yes, um, I want to, yeah, it's, if you, if you can hear the, um, this is a sonnet, but, but each quatrain has, has within, it, within each quatrain, there's oppositional couplets. There, um, if a black man could be president, could a white man be his slave? The oppositional, uh, that's, you know, where the Chinese, um, the Chinese couplet, the Chinese quatrain comes in. So, so this is a sonnet, but it's kind of a, a Chinese sonnet. I call it a sonnet niece. So, um, questions about, uh, or, uh, requests? Yeah, should we, let's see, hold on, let me, any, any requests or questions? Should we move question. into this portion? Are we? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Request um, a question. Maybe you can read some more poems too if there are requests, but any questions to begin, Bethany? Oh, I should, okay, at the outset, let me say, you're right. Um, how this will work. I have you all in gallery view. Hello all, I can see everyone now. This is great. Um, if you have a question and, I, and you have your video on, then you can raise your hand and I will start there with those who do have your, their video on. But also, would love to hear from those who don't have their video on and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to turn it on. Um, there is a hand raise function. Um, if you prefer to leave your video off, does somebody want to try that really quickly who has the video off just so I know that that's working and you can hear me and under hey I see it Howard hi Howard okay <laughs> that worked great thank you Howard um so I will start with those with video on and then move on to those with video off so that we can hear from everybody who's interested in taking part okay so those with video on questions okay um Bethany um I will unmute you <laughs> hello <Hi. laughs> Hi, wonderful reading. Um, and thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for Woodland Pattern. Um, I wondered, do you often memorize your poems? Or, and if you do, how do you feel like, does that change the poem for you at all in any sort of good or bad or neutral way? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good question in that, um, you know, how I got, because so many people request that poem, um, I memorized and it's also, a poem which I insert myself into, you know, it's, it's like a speech act. And so I felt that that poem needs to be memorized, you know, and um, and also the blues poem, you know, I can't sing. And if I, and it, it, it's a performance and is a performative poem. So I tried to, to, uh, to ex, you know, to memorize it and express it the way, you know, um, uh, uh, give it a more expressive uh, performance, um, and I memorized other poems. And you know, I'm I'm kind of superstitious. I felt I feel like if I memorize too many poems, I get stuck in a certain era. I don't know if that's just being just being superstitious. Um, I I also put a little mustache on, and I I went to you know to my my student slam contests and so forth and i try to watch you know try to learn from them right because you know i it's important to learn you know from um um uh, from um yeah from other performers and you know I, I try to um i try to memorize some poems but not not all of them not many um but it's a good you know i i'll, I'll memorize more and i'll just um, and, and I rotate them, you know, and, and um, but for, uh, uh, um, but I, I often begin with how I got that name and blues on yellow to give you, um, to, you know, uh, to warm up the audience because, you know, poetry is a written form is also an oral form. 
And, and so I want to remind the, the audience that it is also an oral form and that memorization. My grandmother was an illiterate woman. You know, she was illiterate. She used to carry me on her back, and, but she had hundreds of poems and, and Confucius sayings and, and Buddhist chants memorized. And, and, and so the, I, I think it's very important to remind the public that, that it is a spoken form a, a form and, and poetry is a, it's also song. And so that I, I try to, uh, I can't sing though. I would, you know, I, when I, I did a reading at the Dodge Festival and a student crawled up on stage and, try, and sang my blues on yellow poem because she, she felt it needed to be sung, but I, I'm such a crappy singer. I, I just don't, you know, don't attempt it. Yeah, but thank you for that. Yeah, for that question. I just have one more question. Um, what, is, what is your astrology sign and how do you think it affects you as a poet if you believe in that? If you don't, disregard the question. My astro <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Mm. But a Capricorn is supposed to be good with money and I'm really terrible with money. I don't know, I, I think I just, I don't deserve that sign. <laughs> what do you think, Beth me? What do you think? <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of Capricorns are really good at money, but you know, it's okay. Maybe that's just the sign that you're <laughs> You know, what's your moon and your rising? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that will fit. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Look it up I should, sometime. I should have you, yeah, uh, do my chart someday. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. oh. I, think, uh, I think Laura has a question. I'm good, but Laura has a question. Hi. Hold on. Wait. Are you unmuting? There we go. Um, and he yeah. made a request for a poem. We just wanted to oh. look. Yeah, there was a request for all the movies. Yes. Yeah, in the chat. Yeah, so he made a, a request in the chat. Alba, Moon, Camellia, Lover. Which, which one? Alba, Moon, Camellia, Lover. Oh, OK. You guys are into love poems. What's going on? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> I guess we're. It's, yeah, it's Friday night. <laughs> it's Friday night. It's Good Friday. <laughs> okay, our oh, moon. Let me find it. I guess yeah, it's Good Friday, and let's do. And this is this also for Don Love Lone Wolf, my my boyfriend who passed. Up. Um, Alba Moon, Camellia Lover, for Don Lone Wolf. Last night through the Camellia bowls, I gazed transfixed at the moon pale-faced, hook-nosed. I know that she is my mother, staring back from death, a dark matter. For hours, we were one with the Earth's static blindness. She did not envy the living, and I did not mourn the dead. Tenderly, she lit up my face, the camellia tree, and my lover. He asleep on his side, cradling his own soft sacks. A few geese leave their noisy billows. Home is a home away from home. A neighbor's unfixed cat courting her own disaster. A windless branch casts a hard silhouette, certain of another tomorrow. Suddenly, I witness the ecstasy of the changing hour as the sun devours the moon's corona and the camellia unfolds in brilliant pinks and reds, and my new love, with a sweet smile on his sour lips, struggles toward the bathroom. His flanks are glistening pearls. Oh, my mother, let the sunlight erase your final torso. Let the moon, let the milk of all suffering fade into the traffic's clean hum. Let father's white suit of sin blanch into my lover's swooning moans and all be forgiven. 
let my happiness blister and counter blow against your magnificent, sick light. Wow. I don't know how, how my mother and, and the lover <laughs> appeared in the same moon, my dead mother and my, but that happened. I guess in Chinese folktale, you, you're supposed to be able to see your lover in the moon. And uh, instead I saw my mother, <laughs> my dead mother. So it was, um, it was a very strange evening. Uh, other, Thank um, thank you. Um, yeah, any other questions or requests from anyone uh, whose video is on or off? Again, if the <laughs> video's off, use the hand raise button. Yes, okay. Uh, let me unmute uh, Kara. Uh, yes. Hi. Okay. What? Um, yeah. First of all, uh, Marilyn, I've been trying to think about what poem I would ask you to read, but you started with the one I was most eager to hear. Um, so I'm still like trying to decide, but um, thank you. And uh, I do hope, uh, Wadlan, this will be available in some way from the recording um, because I, I just want to say to Marilyn, I um, am a, a adjunct lecturer and started off the semester with uh, your poem that you read and- um, How I got that name, is that what? Oh yeah. That's how I got that name, and it just really inspired my class, and I'd love for them to be able to hear you reading it now. I mean, especially, I think that would be such a neat gift to give back to them um, now that, you know, we're all online and trying to transition and get, um, hold on to what was inspiring from the beginning of the course. Um, what do you teach? What, where, where do you teach? Oh, I, I teach for CUNY. I'm in New York. Oh, you're in New York. Oh, hi, CUNY. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am in Queens um, at the epicenter now, I guess, basically. I mean, oh, I'm not. Oh, yes. Oh, so sad. Sorry about that. I hope everything goes well. Oh, my gosh. Yes, uh, I'm doing okay. And so far, everyone I am working with is doing okay. Um, yeah, so I guess I wanted to pass back to you a little bit of the question that my students were asking me about, like, writing about family and, uh, you know, the the tone of your voice and, and the humor, like, and the transcendent. I mean, we just were all really inspired and have been trying to show them videos of um, writers because I think the the vocals are so important, especially even with the the language um, multilingual work. Um, I think that's done a lot too. So I guess I wondered how, how what you would say to a writer or student about family and and how you can do that. <laughs> well, you know, I I'm so I'm a subversive writer, as you can hear. <laughs> as you can see and and i want to embarrass my family and secretly i want to embarrass them and i want to embarrass my ancestors that's <laughs> and well not everybody wants to do that right i know a lot of students say oh how can i write about my family i my father's a jerk and i hate him but i why i can't write about that well you don't have to publish everything, but it's important to tell the truth. Truth is not necessarily fact. You, and as a poet, we can veil it in like weird, interesting imagery, right? We could, uh, we could do a lot of things with form and so forth um, to soften the blow of the truth or to be outrageous and be in your face. And there are many ways to write a poem. And, um, and, and it's, you know, it's important to, to write it down, you know, to, about family. I mean, there, all of us have family secrets yeah, and, yes. and so forth. And, um, and it's important to write, write, write it down. Well, I am somewhat a, a um, you know, a, autobiographical writer, you know, the self, for, but for me, the self, and for many of us who, um, 
who who writers of in the margin writers of color you know while women writers the self represents something much larger than the self the self represents your family tribe nation the galaxy you know <laughs> whatever dogs and cats or what you know we um is for me the self you know i'm an allegorical writer the self all all are always almost always represent something larger than the self so that um so that um yes so that exposed a lot of family secrets and and i was born in a you know in a cold water flat in hong kong you know during you know um after you know years after the revolution but it was a chaotic time and you know it and they didn't treat girls very well i mean you know and so uh, and from that experience, I became a hardened feminist, right? <laughs> yeah, and and so we can't escape our childhoods or our families. So we, and they're rich, you know. The fam family stories are rich with possibilities, and and um, and we write what we know. I mean, we really do. And so, uh, so yeah, I think. Um, some of my students say, "Oh, I can't, I can't write about my family. It's and it's too painful." But, but that's where good poetry comes from, from from the pain, from the deep pain. And mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I I I love Margaret Cho. I love these these wild women. <laughs> these, I I you know I I just I love. Um, uh, I love comics because they they tra they're really transgressive, and that I know where the edge is, you know. And and hip hop music, I know that they transgress the edge. I know where that is, and it's up to you whether you want to cross that edge, you know. And it's up to the writer, you know. It's not, um, and and some writers won't don't want to do that. Some writers are more elegant, right? Um, um so um so there are many ways to write a poem just just be courageous be fearless right be fearless well yes yes thank you <laughs> i i try i'm doing a bit of comics and so forth myself um turning the sonnet or things into comics right or vice versa poetry comics um oh cool yeah uh i guess well, if I could follow up, like, do you feel like there's ever a right time or like a destined time that you know that something's ready to go out into the world? Mm, you know, sometimes I, I think, I think how I got that name, it took me three years to actually write it. Um, I, it was published God, 1990, the Iowa Review, right? And I, I, I started it when I was uh, in graduate school, but I put it away and I, I couldn't finish it. It was, uh, not, uh, it was, you know, a 20 pages in the making, and I kept re rewriting. I have, you know, 20, 30 drafts, um, uh, you know, and it took me years to finish it, you know. And I, but I, I'm, I'm very patient with, with with my poems and some of the poems you know even the short ones you know even the short lyrics you know they often take me a long time you know and i and and the you know sometimes the first draft you think is from god or from the goddess you know oh i love the first draft then you look at it the next day and it sucks right and you might have to put it away for a while so be patient what's happening in and a lot of MFA programs in the in the uh, poetry industry, <laughs> the poetry industrial complex, they want you to publish a lot, right? Just just let you know, uh, give your poem time. Let it, and also we grow. We know as poets, you know. Uh, and um, interesting thing about um, about putting together a, a book, a new and selected. I could I see my my arc, I see the same themes, but I see, I see my, you know, I, I see my, uh, myself struggling with, with the, you know, the Chinese American forms or trying to, 
um, work with form, work with voice, and so forth. It's, you know, uh, give yourself room to grow, to change, to evolve. It's, you know, it's just love the process. And it's important to love poetry, to read a lot, to love, you know, to love the genre. You know, and it's so, there's so many books about hating poetry. I, have you, <laughs> why be a poet if you hate it, if you hate poetry? I don't get that, you know? <laughs> so that's, um, so yeah, so yeah. Uh, just yeah, be be good to your muse. You know, read and uh, give. You know, give the poem breathing room. Give it time. It, it, you don't have to publish all the time. You don't have to. Uh, you know, a lot of poets go back and you know and erase their first books. You know, <laughs> that's I don't know why they. Um, but uh, it's you know, just give yourself time. Just um, be good to the muse. Read a lot read um and and you know so that absor and so you can abs yeah absorb what you read and give your poem time yeah thank you and thank, thank you Kara. appreciate it um is there maybe you know any anybody else last perhaps last questions or requests I mean, <laughs> last requests sorry not um, but other poetic requests or um, questions that people might have. Okay, well, this has really been wonderful. Thank you all for joining us oh, thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. That was beautiful. Um, and and, I, and I'll, I, I'll be teaching at, um, um, at uh, Beloit in the, in the fall, hopefully, you know, <laughs> I'll be teaching there in the fall, so some, I'll be doing readings, and so if you um, locally, and if you want to, you know, um, check, you know, check out a reading, uh, if, if we're allowed to have readings <laughs> anymore, I guess we, you know, we'll be, and, and I'll, I'll see every, you know, I'll come, I'll come by the bookstore and hang out, okay? <laughs> thank you so much. Mm, thank you for this mm, great audience. Wonderful. This, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you all so much. Okay, this is the weird part where I end the meeting and then we don't get to hang out and have a drink or whatever after, but um, maybe sometime soon, I hope. All right. Okay, Bye. thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. I see that Timothy Year is in the audience. Oh, yeah. hi, Timothy. I'll see you, I'll see you at, uh, at the U, at the U. <laughs> Bye.